Hey everyone, this is Will here, and if you're watching this video, it means that version 2.1 PBR Painter, the beta version, is now available to download. So if you've purchased PBR Painter, you can go into your downloads and you should be able to access that now. If you've stumbled upon this video and you don't know what PBR Painter is, you can watch along anyway, um, or check out the links and there's some information about the add-on in general. Alright, so the purpose of this video is to go through all of the different changes that are coming in version 2.1 and which you can now access in the beta version. So I'm going to get started with that. So the first thing I want to show you is when you first install the add-on in Preferences, um, once you go through the normal process, so again, re removing the old version, restarting Blender, and then installing the new version, you now have access to some add-on preferences. So this is really important to set up things um, so that you don't have to do it every time you're using a new material. So the main thing that's in here now, which used to be under the material, is the autosave textures. So this basically just means that it's going to autosave your painted textures every X minutes according to what you've got set in here. So by default it's every three minutes it will save. So just a reminder this doesn't actually save the blend file but it does save the stuff you're working on so that you can access it later and you don't accidentally lose your work. So I definitely recommend having this on. Um, the other stuff that's in here isn't going to make any sense yet but I'm going to go through that when it's applicable. But in general, as I add more and more preferences, this is where they'll appear. So keep an eye out on this section in future versions as well. All right, the next thing that is new. So you'll notice now when you go to use the add-on, when you've got a new material, there's a new button that says Set Up Material for PBR Painter. So it previously, um, the interface was just there for you to use and you would just add new layers and you would just start that way. The problem with that is that if you had an underlying material that you wanted to kind of add to with PBR Painter, you couldn't really do that. So I've set this system up now whereby you have to actually initiate the new PBR Painter material and in doing that process you can choose whether or not you want to keep what's currently there. So I'll demonstrate that for you now. So I've got this material that I've prepared earlier, it's just something silly like this, um, and I'm going to show you the nodes quickly. So basically it's just a noise texture attached to the colour. <clears throat> I've got this bump node set up for the normals and I've just got the metallic and the roughness modified just to demonstrate. So if I've got this material loaded, um, so by the way, this could be any material that you've made previously. The one criteria, because PBR Painter uses this principal shader, um, your material has to have this general setup. So it is a principal shader attached to the material output, and then all of your inputs attached into these inputs here. So when I click this button now, What's going to happen is it's going to, first it's going to ask if I want to back up the current material, so just make a copy of it before I set up for PBR Painter, which is probably advised. Um, the other thing it's going to ask is if you want to use the current material as a background, which is what I was talking about. So you'll notice if I change back to this material, that option is gone because there's nothing actually in the, the nodes in here. So if I go ahead and click that and then click use current material as background, when I click OK, it will set it up so the material is still there and what's actually happened is it's gone into this node group which is now the background layer and inside that it is going to be just replicating whatever you had in the nodes, the, the node tree prior to that. Um, so really handy obviously because you can then go in and actually modify the background however you want but more importantly it will let you carry over your other materials that were made outside of the add-on um, into PBR Painter for modifying. So. Once it's kind of in as a background, then you can do all the normal stuff that you would usually do. So you can just um, pick colors, whatever you want to do, and you can just paint on top of your previous material. So that's obviously really handy to have. All right, so the next thing that's different is there's now this background button here. So there used to be a layer, sorry, there used to be a panel down here which had the background um, material, which has now gone up to this button because it's a bit more discreet and it's kind of getting it out of the way of this main interface down here. If you've got something that you've imported as a custom background, when you click this, all it's going to say is that it's using a custom background and therefore there's nothing to modify in here because anytime you want to modify the background, in this case, you would actually just go into your nodes and do stuff in here. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to swap over to that other material. If you make something and you don't have any background material, so you just set it up from scratch, um, I won't back up the material. Then when you click this button, then you have access to all the new, the, the normal um, principal shader inputs. So you can change like the metallic, uh, the color, whatever you want. So this is everything you would have seen in the previous versions. It's now just in this, this separate button over here. So that's a bit more easy to access and it's kind of, as I said, a bit more discreet. And it's it makes for, a, a, I think, a cleaner UI. 
All right, so next thing I want to show you, and this is something that I think is really exciting because it's going to really speed things up, and that is when you add a multi-channel layer, which you normally will, you now have these things called multi-channel shortcuts. And basically what these are, are they're basically programmed in to speed up your workflow depending on what your workflow is. So for example, the first button is import multiple textures. And what that's going to do is it's going to let you select a bunch of files and then just quickly import it into your channels to be painted on. So I'll show you that now. So as an example, I've got this asphalt texture set. So I've got a roughness of normal, a height, an albedo. Um, I'm not going to use the height just for demonstration, but Basically what you do is you just select any textures that you want and then you go import multiple textures and what it will do is it will just add the textures into the different channels and it will turn those channels on and set them up for you. So one thing you'll also notice now is that there's these checkboxes on the actual panel header rather than appearing inside the panel and the reason for this is it's now really easy to actually tell what channels are turned on for your layer. So I think that's really important to have it like that so that you can quickly see that you have albedo roughness normal. Um, when you're switching between channels, just as a reminder of kind of what you're working with. So, as you can see, it's gone in and it's turned on the albedo, it's switched it to texture, it's imported the texture from the albedo, and it's done the same for roughness and normal. And it will do the same for every single one of these channels, depending on how the texture is named, and I'll go through that in a second. And it can also be used for any of these as well. So you can literally import any single, any any number of textures, and it will just automatically fill up these um, as it needs. So you can import an emission texture if you want, subsurface color, anything that you want to use. Um, I'm just going to quickly show you what it looks like. So now it's actually just, I should have done that at the start, but basically now as you can see it's just painting that material on. So it's quickly imported that set of textures and then it's just letting me paint it on. So you can then do stuff like add, change the scale if you want, all the normal stuff. Um, and then it's just, as I said, it's really speeding up the workflow because then you can just add another layer click this button, uh, find a different texture, whatever that may be. So I'm just going to grab one randomly, so snow, import them, it's all set up, and then I can paint some snow on top. So again, really, really useful. And that's something that was requested quite a few times and really happy to be putting that in right now. All right, so I'm going to go back and, so I mentioned that it uses the file names to determine where to put these textures. And that is something that's inside the preferences, which you saw earlier, which I can now explain. So basically these in here are the tags for that importing process. So by tags, I mean, it will look for these specific tags within your file names in order to assign those textures to the different channels. So I've set this up to have a bunch of default tags. Um, but if you have a situation where this just isn't getting the right texture, um, you can go in here and you modify these depending on what you need. So all you need to do is just separate your tags with a semicolon um, and then just write your new one. So tag, whatever, whatever it's going to be, whatever you want to use to pick up um, that particular channel material, uh, texture. Um, you'll notice that there's bump, so you can import a bump map and what that's going to do is it's going to put it in the normal channel, it's going to go into texture and it's going to tick this use bump map for you so that you can actually use a bump map automatically. You can also import a glossiness texture and all that's going to do is it's going to put it into roughness and it's going to invert this color ramp for you so that it's ready to, to paint using Blender's roughness um, channel. So very intuitive, very easy to use and I think it's going to be a huge bonus um, if you're using a lot of texture sets like that. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So I'm just going to paint that on a little bit over here. Um, <clears throat> So the other, the other shortcut you'll notice over here is this one, and this is link channels to layer mask. And I'm going to make a new mask to show you that. Sorry, a new layer. And basically what this is going to, what this is going to do is it's going to link whatever channels you select in here, it's going to automatically link them to the layer mask that you're using. So for example, if I create a procedural mask, and then maybe a, I add in a gradient mask, which, if you've watched my videos, I really like this, set, this setup and I seem to keep coming back to it just for demonstration. Um, and if I set this up, by the way, I'm going through this quickly because I'm assuming you actually have watched tutorial videos and you know what I'm doing. If not, definitely go and check those out. Um, so say I have a layer mask that looks like that. Then I can use this button and I can pick which... Um, I might just uh, quickly turn that off so I'm not previewing it. 
I can pick which channels I want to link to the mask. So for example, if I go albedo, uh, metallic, normal, roughness, and I click OK, what you'll find when that loads, there it is, um, is inside here, it's, it's again, it's switched on these channels for you and it's now linking them to the mask. And basically what that means is it's just linking the input for these channels to whatever's in that mask. So if I just click the fill tool, what you'll see is it's now linked the albedo to the mask. So actually I'm, I'm gonna hide this layer underneath because it's kind of confusing. And I can now show you kind of what, what that's done. So for example, in the albedo, I have this albedo color ramp and I can kind of just change the colors depending on what I want, to, want it to look like. And it's just linked that to the mask itself as, as the name suggests. So I can kind of play around with that. I can go into the normals. I can play around with the normal color ramp. But in any case, they're all linked to that mask itself and you can use these independent color ramps to kind of modify them. So I think this is really important. You'll probably use this a lot if you're doing procedural stuff. Um, because it's a really useful kind of quick way to link everything together and then now what you'll find is when you change the mask itself like if I do something like this it just automatically updates all those different channels because they're all linked into the exact same kind of output from that mask so you can modify stuff like that and it will just keep it all connected um, in that way so again a really useful tool as a shortcut because I think it really speeds things up all right I'm going to delete this layer now and I'm going to turn this back on and just paint some more on there. All right, so there's, there's two more things that I wanted to, to show you guys. And the first one is in layer mask. So actually I might make a new layer again. In layer mask now, when you go add a new mask, there's another type and that is this preset. And basically what that is, is it's just gonna be a, a bunch of different preset masks that are designed to give you a certain effect. So for example, there's cracks, there's scratches, and there's grunge, which uses cycles. And basically this is something that I can just add to indefinitely. So it's just a matter of just adding in new ones as needed. Um, but for now, there's just these three. And there'll definitely be more of these before the full version release. So if, just for an example, I'm gonna show you the cracks. And if I preview that one, this is kind of what it looks like. So it looks something like that. And then for all of these different masks, what you'll find that there's, there's these specific tools in here that you can use to modify them. So you can change the scale. Um, you can change the thickness of this one in this case. Uh, you can change the detail. So anything from nothing to super detailed. Um, and you can change the roughness, which basically makes it look like that. So. It's, I've tried to actually set up this as a preset that kind of looks reasonable, but you can play around with those if you want. So if I just turn that off now, that preview, um, what I can then do is then start turning on my channels and then paint those cracks on where I want them. So for example, I probably want to use normals for the cracks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, I think I'll link the normals to the mask just so I can kind of tune them a little bit. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting it and that's kind of the effect that you'll get from that. So one thing you'll note is that for a start, this is actually bumping up. So what I want to do is just invert the color ramp in here for the normals, and that's going to make it kind of crack downwards as it should. So that's really cool. You can paint it on like that. You can then modify this color ramp if you want. So this is the normals connected to the mask. You can do things like that. You can pull the sides in, everything like that. Another thing that I've added uh, which I should go through before I go into any more detail about the masks, is every single channel now has this mask multiplier. And this is basically to give you more control over how each channel is affected by the masks you're using. So for example, if you increase the multiplier, it's just making that stronger and stronger. And if you decrease it, it'll go down to a factor of, to a value of one. Um, but you can, the important thing is you can do that independently for each channel. So for example, if I wanted to have a color in the cracks, I can keep the normal ramp multiplier at one and then I can increase the multiplier of the color just to kind of make it cover that area better. And this is something that I've actually found is really important and it's actually something that since I've put it in, I've actually used it all the time because it gives you a much better control over how each single channel is coming out after you use that kind of mask effect. All right. so. Um, that's basically it. I will just demonstrate just to remind everyone um, when you're using one of these preset masks you can of course add more masks if you want to modify them further. So for example I can add procedural and merge them together. 
So if I want to do something like this and kind of, if I use, I can kind of use the procedural to kind of dictate where the cracks are appearing. So for example, if I just play around with these blending things, I can do something like this. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to let me mask that cracks mask to make sure it's kind of not appearing everywhere. So rather than having to paint it where I want it, I can kind of do this to kind of set it up exactly how I like. Um, and then use that to kind of just paint everywhere. So now instead of painting cracks everywhere, it's just going to paint it where I've got those, uh, where I've got that procedural mask. So that looks a little bit cooler now because now it's not just kind of showing up everywhere. So it's kind of up to you whether or not you want to paint it by hand or whether you want to just make some more complicated masks in here um, and then just kind of paint the whole thing. Um, I'll just show you quickly while I'm here. So in addition to this uh, cracks, there's also, I'm just going to delete these. And I might just um, delete this asphalt layer and just change the background to something metallic looking. Like that and I'll just show you quickly the scratches mask because I think that's really cool and it's under preset under scratches so this is all done with procedural stuff which means that you can have complete control over what's going on um, with these tools over here so just gonna preview that and it's not showing up and the reason is I've got this color ramp modified over here so that's kind of what the, the mask looks like. Um, you can change the mapping and the scale and all that like this. So you can move it around. Um, you can change the color ramps if you want to kind of have more or less. Um, and then you can do things like you can change the length. So if you put the length down, it will look like that. Put the length up, it'll look like that. And you can change the thickness, up or down. And again, I've tried to make this kind of look good with the default settings. Um, so if we paint that on again, well, you can kind of see it's painted on there. Kind of looks like that. Um, and again, if you want to add, trying to make it more realistic, you can kind of duplicate it. So just make more scratches and then you might want to do something like change the length of the scratches and then maybe rotate it or something or translate it just so you kind of got different effects. So that's the scale, so, um, but yeah, you can, you can change the scale in one dimension if you kind of want to have it dimensional scratches, so that's kind of cool. So you can do that if you want. Um, you can change the mapping, so sometimes you don't want scratches to go around corners, so you can use UV mapping if you want to do that. If you want to put seams on the corners, that's sometimes handy. Um, and then obviously, yeah, as, as per normal, you can change this blend factor and, whoops kind of go between the two different masks and set up something that you really like. You will find if you add a bunch of this procedural stuff, eventually it will start to slow things down a little bit. So once you're happy, you can just click the bake or the, the merge button, and this will just bake it into an alpha map so that you've got it there um, without having to procedurally generate everything kind of while you're working. So that's definitely important. With something like scratches, you probably want to use a high enough resolution so that you don't lose that detail. Um, but yeah, that's the overview of, of how that works. And, but anyway, I always tend to get a bit carried away with these videos, so I'm going to leave it there. One thing I will note is that, again, it's a beta version, so if you're using it at the time of this video being released, definitely do try it out, but do expect that there may be a few bugs, because this is kind of the purpose of the open beta, is to kind of weed out those, those hidden bugs before it's released in full. So definitely try it and definitely report any issues that you have. And also provide feedback, because I can modify some things before the full release, uh, if that's kind of requested by a bunch of people. So I'm going to leave it there. As I said, super excited to have this release. Please try it out. Please download it. And yeah, let me know how it goes and what you think. But as always, thanks for watching and I will catch you next time. Cheers.